Kent, the Suns hired Monty Williams, which means they got their man, which means the Lakers didn't get the guy they wanted. So listen, is this a shift in the balance of power? Is this a good hire? There's so many thoughts. What are you thinking? I think it is a good hire. A uh, guy who's well-respected in the league, has coaching experience. Um, I didn't think somebody like that would come to the Suns and work for Robert Sarver, to be honest with you. It, that hasn't been his track record in hiring coaches. So it is a positive move that Monty Williams saw something here and he wanted to be a part of it. You, you had to think he had options. Not maybe the Lakers, maybe somebody else as this thing turns. The first thing I thought was that Monty Williams is gonna be able to teach these guys how to be men. Monty Williams has seen things, experienced things, and been through things that are gonna help these guys in the locker room grow up in terms of who they're going to be as people, and that's gonna help them out as ball players. We've seen that kind of model be successful for the Diamondbacks and Torrey Lovello. The second thing I thought was DeAndre Ayton. What if Monty Williams is the reason that Joel Embiid is doing some of the things that he's doing? What would you think of what would be success for Monty Williams going into this first season? Ooh, um, well, I mean, I think improving like the Suns told us they were going to improve last year. Right. Um, maybe other than coaching players, maybe he can teach Robert Sarver how to be an owner. <laughs> maybe there's a clause in his contract that the owner can't just walk into his office anytime he wants, that the owner can't meddle. I hope that's the next step because Suns fans, I think a lot of them are like me. It's like, okay, that's a positive step but I want to see how the owner reacts. I want to see how he runs his organization to, to know that things have really changed. Absolutely. You've, you've got to do more than just take one step at a time. For, for right. Suns fans, they're jaded. I get that. You beat L.A., right? So first you shut the door on the Lakers and their playoff hopes during the season, and now you take the coach that L.A. wanted. I just love beating L.A., and I'll take that win wherever I can get it. Greg Moore revelations recently on the federal case into the college bribery scam with basketball, U of A, Sean Miller takes more hits. You know, supposedly on, you know, people say he's paying on DeAndre Ayton, paying players. Does he survive this? Seems like we've been asking this question now for a year. Does Sean Miller survive this? You, you wanna know what I really think? Yeah, should he survive this? Sean Miller needs to stand up on a table and say, yeah, I paid him and I'm gonna do it again and I got off cheap because $10,000 a month for DeAndre Ayton ain't squat. You see what he's making in the NBA. And then Dave Hickey and Robbins, the president and athletic director at U of A, need to stand up behind Sean Miller and say, yeah, he paid him, and yeah, we gave him the money, and we're going to keep doing it. You know why? Because the system is a problem. We don't care. We're not going to fire our guy. We don't care if he broke the rules, and that rule breaking isn't law breaking. That, that trial is a bunch of junk. So we are gonna throw the full weight of our university, which wouldn't be a Pac-12 school without these young men doing what they're doing on the field of athletic play. We're gonna support them. We're gonna start a court fight, and we're gonna change things. Everything's different from this moment forward. That's what needs to happen. I don't think the change is gonna come from a university, though. I think the change is ultimately gonna come from, if it's ever gonna come from players, mm -hmm. from players saying, I've had enough, let's, let's affect us. We all know what happens in college basketball, but the way U of A has stood behind him, mm -hmm. to me, for them to fire him, it, it seems like they're going to have to have Sean Miller on wiretaps saying, I paid players, or have some kind of paper trail. And right. we all know that doesn't exist when you can be paying people cash, allegedly. Some kind of smoking gun, right? But again, man, you, I'm not asking a bunch of 18, 19, 20 year olds and their families to say, yo, we're gonna stage this mass strike when we don't even all know each other. I'm asking people in power to step up and do the right thing, fight the biggest fight, quit doing this little incremental, uh, do what's right, you know what's right, pay those players. Break the Cardinals draft, Kyler Murray number one, we all assume he's gonna be the starter. He's gonna Cliff, be the starter. Cliff Kingsbury <laughs> says, oh no, no, we're not gonna name him starter. Steve Kime says, oh yeah, he's the starter. What do you make of all this? Guys, just say what's on your mind, right? Like, don't say what you think you're supposed to say. Don't don't try to, you know, play lip service. Say what's on your mind, say it cleanly, say it directly, say it quickly, then move on from it. Kyler Murray's the starter, but you're open to competition. So if Brett Hundley comes out, or if Knopf comes out and sets the world on fire, then you're going to have to pay attention to that. Barring that, you're gonna give Murray every single chance to do this, because that's why you got him and moved Rosen. Of course you're open to competition, but say it like that. Don't, don't. I would say, I mean, if you, wanna, if you wanna be honest, say that these other two could set the world on fire. 
Kyler Murray's still going to start? <laughs> I mean, if, if Kyler Murray doesn't start, that's an admission that you made two mistakes, getting rid of Josh Rosen and drafting Kyler Murray. I get why Cliff Kingsbury said it. He's got to go into quarterback rooms and meeting rooms with players. Brett Hundley, he doesn't want to declare any competition over. He wants maybe to push Kyler Murray a little bit. But come on, week one, we all, we all know number one's going to be taking a shotgun snap. My mother used to tell me don't throw good money after bad. So if you do make a mistake, and if you do make two mistakes, flush them, get rid of them, right? So if drafting Rosen was a mistake, if drafting Murray was a mistake, if you should have gone with Hundley all along, admit it as quick as you can. Have an open competition, because you've been around the NFL, you know how competitive guys are in that locker room. If they don't think the guy on the field is giving them the best shot, that's gonna demoralize everybody, and you're gonna be having another terrible season. I don't care if I walk in off the street and make the best team. That's the guy who should start, not the guy you, you draft. Don't worry about draft picks. I worry about draft picks. I take my number <laughs> one guy, number one, he's, he's, I start him. I don't care what kind of preseason he has. Yo, Kent, it's a long season. The Diamondbacks are off to a hotter start than anybody could have predicted. They're sitting right there in spitting distance of first place. Third best record in the National League. The question is, can they keep it up? So what do you think? It is the big question. Last year we saw this sort of same first half run, play well and then collapse. I don't know if they can or not. I'm impressed with what I've seen so far. That, I mean, David Peralta is having another excellent season. Can Christian Walker continue to hit, hit for power? I think that lineup is a question. And plus, will consistent starters emerge through the whole season other than Zach Granke? But I, I, I like what this team's doing now and I, I like their hitting approach. Mm fewer strikeouts and they're, they're able to get to another team's bullpen and do some damage. Is what made them good a couple of years ago was just that patient approach and just chipping away, chipping away. Let's look at the starting rotation though. They've got three starting pitchers with ERAs under four and then Robbie Ray sitting right there at 4.18. I know ERA isn't the stat that everybody used to use. Zach Grinke's five and one. I know that wins and losses isn't the stat that everybody used to use, but I think we're getting some indications that this thing is trending in the right direction. I talk to a bunch of people around baseball, I ask questions. No one is surprised that the team is winning this way. Then there's also the matter of the schedule, right? What did you see when you saw the first couple weeks? Yeah, I didn't think they'd be, at, you know, at, 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 what are they, won 12 out of their last 16, something yeah. like that. They're better on the road than they are at home. I also like what I've seen from Toy Lovello. Mm. He, he actually seems to have learned from last year. He's not dawdling in making moves, taking uh, Godley out of the starting lineup for, or, uh, uh, rotation. Mm -hmm. For instance, Tori admitted the other day, hey, last year I probably wouldn't have done it this soon, but I am being more proactive this year. I, I like that. I think that's going to help them. Yeah, look, we're going to keep our eyes on it, right? The first month of the schedule was brutal. Dodgers, Yankees, Red Sox, things aren't going to be that tough moving forward. Let's see what the Diamondbacks do.